Uh, probably knowing the level, probably being able to, uh, yeah, to have a good judgment of the level of the climbers and from round from one round to the next to sort of have the you know experience with the route setting team and the confidence to make the right judgments that will work in the competition. I mean, it's just a matter of experience and uh, yeah, a little bit of luck also, but that's probably the hardest thing. Yeah, no, I think um, actually finals and semifinals are both maybe more difficult to set than the qualifying round. Um, sometimes the qualifying round, especially more and more for the women, can be challenging because uh, the top women are at a very high level and uh, some of the lo lower level qualifying women are not quite at that level. So to be able to create a competition that is effective for all the climbers can be more challenging. Um, but actually I think because you're trying to really refine the semifinals and the finals to put on a good show, to have a good ranking and make it fun and interesting for the climbers and diverse, generally we spend the most amount of time on these, these boulders and they're, it's the hardest rounds to set. Uh, yeah, I, I think, I, I guess there's a perception that the semifinal round is always the hardest round of competition, and I think generally that's probably the case. Personally, I don't think it has to be that way. I mean, we saw uh, even in the qualification round here for the men or last week in Toronto, it's a very hard round of climbing. Um, and I think sometimes you see a hard final that's harder than the semi. And I, I think it's, uh, it's our job in the semifinal really to find a good ranking, to take six finalists. And so that's why the perception is that it's always the hardest, but it doesn't have to be that way. It's hard, especially when you have uh, examples of, yeah, yeah, it's a good example, Jan and Rusev are very different in height. Uh, I think, in general, the idea is that there's, there's always going to be some, some place or some time or some position where one person can have an advantage over another, but that's not always the taller climber. So, uh, in general, when we're trying to evaluate maybe a boulder or the round of competition, I think the best you can do is try and think about how to balance it. So there may be some times where, uh, you know, something is a little bit easier for a taller climber. But if also there are times when it's something is actually a little bit easier for a shorter climber, then you can balance that out reasonably well. And I mean, it's never perfect, but that's basically what we're trying to do. Uh, I think honestly, n not nothing really different than for the men. In general, we're taking into account, you know, the height of the, the competitors, uh, the body position they'll be in, um, considering the reach, and but it's really not any different, I think, than comparing, uh, you know, the, having a t very tall male climber and a very short male climber in a competition. If anything, you just think of some of the differences in that when you're climbing, uh, you know, as usually a team of guys climbing, um, there are some things that they have a the women have maybe more specific strengths on than some of the male climbers um, or some of the forerunners we test with anyway. So you have to balance that a little bit. Of course, uh, you know, there are stereotypes like women being very strong on crimps or strong with uh, flexibility and high heel positions and things like this we take into account. Uh, that's a tough question for me. I, I'm not the strongest climber, certainly of uh, the International uh, World Cup root setters. Um, and I think it's a balance of being able to know your own level and you know make a good judgment of the climbers' levels. Uh, on the other side, there's always some strong, very strong climbers who are root setters. And sometimes, if you're too strong, you don't, you know, you you can't balance the level very well. So I think you have you basically have to have a some minimum level to be able to approximate the all of the moves and to be able to do some of the climbs, but I think as we see in most World Cups, um, it's a team of root setters. So there's some members of a team that have specific styles they're strong in and others that have different. And as long as you can balance that pretty well and you know you have a, a chief and a good team that can manage it, then you can have a balance of experience levels in terms of the climbing. That's a good question. Um, Personally, I don't think so. I, I, I think whether it's in the gym or in competition, it's uh, 
it's it's a competition. It's not necessarily a competition on rock or to simulate rock climbing. It's just something different. So I like to have as many styles as we can possibly have. If that means there's some things that are really fingery and technical and balancey like outdoor rock climbing, then great. Some other things that are totally things you might not find normally outside, like running across a wall or you know doing more tricks. Uh, I like all the styles. I really think as long as you have a diversity of styles in any round of competition, personally I think it's cool. Uh, I, I don't think that's the case. I think actually more of the time, like if you take some, some outdoor rock climbers or boulders who are really strong, uh, generally they may not do as well in competitions, but I don't actually think that's because of this this difference in styles. It's maybe mostly because of experience, because also you see many high-level climbers in competitions that are also very strong outside. So, yeah, I think it's also a bit about the format and uh, how the format, uh, yeah, works. I mean, essentially the job of the root setter is to, you know, divide the field of competitors and to do that with just pure, powerful, technical rock climbing um, can, can work, but to do that across like four boulder problems in a round, for me that's not diverse enough. It, it's cool to have that and then also have something, you know, something different. Not anymore. Um, I think maybe there used to be before uh, there started to be World Cups in North America. Definitely there was a stereotype of maybe American style being powerful and gymnastic and maybe showy and World Cup setting. In America, we used to refer to World Cup setting European style as maybe more technical and uh, tricky. Um, but I think there's really been a blending of styles the past few years, really. So, especially with European setters coming here to set in Vail, and uh, you know, myself and a couple other people having some experiences in Europe. So, I think people will always talk about it that way. But actually, I think it's uh, yeah, it's not like that so much anymore. Ah, uh, good question, yeah. Um, oh, I'd have to remember the rounds. There's usually one or two good boulders from, from every competition. Uh, and because I know most of the root setters, I'm, I'm also trying to think of who it was that set this boulder or what the ideas were. Um, it's hard, I can't think of anything exactly right now, but uh, you know, we had, in, in just Toronto was the most recent, and uh, we had a couple boulders there that were, were pretty interesting. There was a third men's final uh, that Guillaume uh, finished backwards with a, a kind of interesting weird mantle and Percy Bishton set that and um, it was funny because we did not anticipate this method so uh, that's to me what's most interesting is even though I would think of it as a really cool boulder it's cool because it's not exactly what we expected and that, that's, that's always fun.